Now, how did I take 22 Coursera courses in just three months? Am I actually a robot? That's almost two courses a week. So what happened was is I worked at Coursera at the time and we had a competition to see who could take the most courses that quarter. Mostly so everyone would kind of dog food the product itself and actually take courses on the platform. And would you believe it that I did not even win the competition with 22 courses? But I learned a lot and I got to build my skills so I could eventually become a software engineer without doing a boot camp or having a CS degree. Now in this video, I want to talk a little bit about how I even got through 22 courses in that time and how I found the time and how I stayed motivated and my study tips. And this is just stuff that works for me and may not work for everyone. And honestly, I've always been pretty good about learning on my own and taking courses online because those are the resources that I really had. So I'm not actually a robot, but if you think I still am, please like the video and comment down below if you think I'm a deep fake instead. Now, I didn't take just technical courses, even though that was a big part of it. I also took courses on philosophy and entrepreneurship because those were some of my interests. And I also took some general life skill classes like communication. So when I worked at Coursera, we did not call people who took the courses students. We actually called them learners because really we're volunteering your time to learn. You're volunteering your free time to taking these courses. When you're a self-motivated learner, it's harder sometimes because you don't really have that external motivation, like perhaps getting a bad grade if you don't study for an exam. Personally, for me, I just love learning and it's kind of a hobby for me. One of the ways I got through so many courses was to really just prioritize studying. So my dad always told me that if you truly want time for something, you'll make it. And that really stuck with me. And of course the competition didn't hurt either. Now, one of the exciting big learning projects that I did at the time was actually go through the deep learning specialization. So for deep technical courses, I really needed fully focused time. And for that, I meant I really needed to have an hour a day where I would study no matter what. And for me, that time ended up being about 9.30 to 10.30 PM every night. And I know this is a super bad habit and I know I'm not supposed to have my computer or screen in bed or before you go to sleep. So I would get into my PJs and get into bed with my laptop and my notebook and actually do my coursework from 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. every night. And basically I made a goal to do that every night. And of course, you know, I didn't actually accomplish it every single night during this quarter, but because I'd scheduled that time every single night and I probably did it about 90% of the time at least. And some days, obviously, I had a family dinner or an event and I couldn't do the studying and I skipped it, but I would never let myself skip more than one day of studying. And that's really one of my biggest tips. It's just so easy to get out of a habit. If I knew I had to miss studying more than once or I knew that ahead of time, I would either change the study time to something earlier in the day or double up the day before, uh, not the day after because you're less likely to do it then. But I made my best effort into committing to that hour. And some of you may say, well, you worked at Coursera during that time. Time, so it was super easy for you to love using Coursera and love working on it, but actually no, it was sometimes kind of a hindrance to actually learning because I would be using Coursera and I was working there and I would see a bug or something and I would stop what I was doing and want to stop and like go file the bug or try to debug it myself. I set myself a rule to not get distracted, that this study time was my time and not work time and just kind of jot down the note and deal with it in the morning when I got to work. My study time was my study time and I protected it. Now, some of you may have noticed this book in my pile that I really like called Deep Work by Cal Newport. I really, really recommend reading it. It's helped me become very efficient with my study time. So the book actually teaches you how to have full focus when you're doing something. And unfortunately, our life is just full of distractions and our phones are constantly buzzing and social media, and it's just hard to focus on a task for so long. A few years ago, I realized I was no longer really capable of sitting down and studying something with no distractions for 30 to 40 minutes. I was checking my phone and I was checking social media and it was taking way longer to do tasks that should have taken a lot less time. This book actually recommended some great exercises for me to train my focus skills. And one of the recommendations was actually to print out the articles or the tasks that you had to do, whatever you had to do, and leave your phone at home and take those papers and go into the woods and sit there for an hour. So now you don't have to study, you don't have to do anything, but if you're sitting there with your papers, with nothing else, with not your phone to distract you, you'll probably end up studying or doing the task that you have in front of you. And that really helped me realize how much my everyday life was distracting me. So I had an Apple Watch and I still do have it, but I don't actually have it on me all the time and I turn all notifications off. 
See, I train myself every day to actually focus. And Cal Newport also has another book called Digital Minimalism. And that talks about the tactics to kind of break you out of your social media addiction habits. I did these exercises for about a week and one was just cutting out social media for a period of time and honestly, I was bored like two days in because I had so much free time. Now, of course, I still use social media, but the goal is to use it intentionally and not just something you do when you're bored and have nothing else to do. So other than that, then the hour of day that I had studying deep learning and really focusing on that, to actually win the competition and take more courses, I actually combined studying with other activities that I did. So I also have a gym habit, and during this quarter, I was going to the gym every single day before work. And what I do instead of people watching or watching TV on the treadmill was actually put up my Coursera courses while I was running. Now, of course, this tactic doesn't work for highly technical courses, but for something like my philosophy course or the communications one that I was taking, I could totally listen to that on the treadmill. And honestly, that time really adds up. Now, I really don't do this anymore, that was for that quarter, but sometimes I still love to download documentaries or podcasts and learn something while exercising or commuting or being in the car. I also created a study group at work and I do this to this day at whatever job I'm at. And I talked a little bit about this in my video on five things I wish I knew before my first software engineering job, but having that work study group really motivated me to learn and set aside that hour a week. You can motivate each other and talk about what you're studying, and that would really kickstart me again into learning. School was kind of great for that, you know, because you could always show up to the library, you'd have friends there, and you could all study together. I've actually even sometimes found those study with me YouTube videos or Twitch streams actually kind of helpful and motivational when I wanted a virtual study buddy. But another thing is, I also focus a lot on rest. It's really very difficult to study for many hours a day without a break, especially if you're doing this kind of on a volunteer basis. And that's the same with code. No one can really code for 18 hours a day at full productivity every day for long stretches of time. The people that claim to do this are never that productive. So in my opinion, I'd rather work less hours, but fully commit to learning and truly focus during that time. And I mean, I burn out sometimes too, and I have lazy days too. I'm not 100% productive all the time. But when I do take that break, I focus on quality rest. So what's quality rest to me? So just laying in bed watching YouTube videos kind of makes me feel worse. First I was like, yay, nothing to do, I can rest, but really I would get kind of sad and depressed coming into the afternoon. And that was so unhealthy. Quality rest for me was actually doing something I enjoyed, so spending time with friends or being with my puppy Corky and bringing him to the beach. And instead of punishing myself for not working and getting nothing done and just staying at home and wanting to be productive but not being able to be productive because I wasn't rested, I'd actually go do the thing that I enjoyed and actually fully rest. And then the next day I'd be able to actually focus. And again, I'm not always perfect and sometimes I take a break, but committing that time most days allows me to keep producing content. And more importantly, like actually enjoy the process and actually not feel like it's work. And I honestly just put aside a day every weekend to truly rest. And honestly, another thing that I did was I cut out people in my life who made me sad or anxious or didn't bring me much joy. And currently, even though that wasn't the case when I was doing these Coursera courses because I couldn't afford it, I do spend more money now to buy back my time. So for example, getting some meal delivery on busy days so I don't need to meal prep or think about groceries so I can still eat healthy but I could spend more time on my projects or my work. And that's the calculus and those are the priorities that you have to make. So if learning something is so important to you, building the routine in it, in my opinion, is the best thing that you can do. I really truly believe that if you set aside an hour every day to do something, you're going to get so much further than you think you would. Discipline is a muscle and setting aside that time and committing to it is a great skill. And honestly, that's what it takes. Figure out your why, what are you doing this for, and love the process. And really learn for yourself what you need to keep going and stay motivated. So I hope you like this video. It's a little different than my normal tech tutorial content, but if you like this, please like the video and subscribe.